right, post hiking day. Time to relax, wind down a bit, and try to catch up on all the uh, news and all that. There was some interesting uh, drone news and everything, and some stuff that I learned today, which actually still <laughs> relates to drones, funny enough. Everything from uh, drones crashing, like a military drone, to something about people saying um, more regulations will actually uh, be better in terms of allowing people to fly more. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right. Is it Ekam? Uh, thank you for your words of encouragement uh, for the uh, drone videos and all that. Uh, for me, it's just about, you know, having fun and sharing it. Hopefully other people in the world get to um, enjoy stuff that they wouldn't normally get to enjoy as well. It actually makes me wonder too if uh, a lot of people that um, watch the videos like that, because I know some people say, go fly it more. I wonder if people are aware, like because of the videos I create, that I just can't fly it everywhere. Just based on the laws in Canada. So my hope is um, stuff like this will create the awareness so that we'll have better uh, regulations that are reasonable. I mean, for me, I'd love to fly it here, but again, I just can't because of those ridiculous uh, drone laws here in Canada. And for me, I, you know, for me, I need practice to practice flying more to be able to capture like uh, better footage and such. So hopefully, hopefully soon, it's supposed to be here at least like in a week or maybe like in two weeks or so. Although I haven't seen the new regulations yet, um, in terms of things like Canada and drones, I learned something today which kind of reminded me of the topic. Um, last year, I basically participated in this um, fun, I guess, documentary. It was called uh, Canada in a Day. I think they had it in the US before. It's called Life in a Day, where they just wanted videos from everybody and they'll try to make a film of, about it. So I submitted it last year and they actually uh, shortlisted me saying, oh, they like my video and all that. So they might use it at the end, but they don't know because it comes down to a director's choice and all that. So I just learned today, unfortunately, uh, the video that I submitted didn't make the final cut, even though I made it like through the uh, final process while they're deciding. So I guess it didn't fit into the, um, the direction of what the director wanted. But I was thinking because to my understanding of that documentary, which is supposed to show Canada for the 150th anniversary, there's drone footage in there to my knowledge, like from regular people. If you understand Transport Canada's um, policy with drones and so forth, the fact that they gave it to a, I guess, a production company to broadcast it on TV, even though you're doing it for fun, it would count as commercial purpose now, correct? So I'm interested in seeing, you know, Transport Canada and Mark Garneau, like, put the heavy fines in that production company or everyone that participated in making that documentary to like say, nope, you had a drone video in there, now it's illegal. I dare Transport Canada to do that. That would be so interesting if they do. Which again, just shows me how ludicrous the laws are like for the drone rules. I mean, again, there has to be a distinct difference between someone shooting it commercially, like obviously being hired and all that stuff versus someone shooting it for fun and then just giving it the footage. And in case you guys are wondering, uh, yeah, for the day, I did, did just basically what they said, like just, you know, film your life and all that. So I just filmed like the day and I was actually using my smartphone. So it was kind of shaky. So it didn't actually meet the quality of my opinion. I was just surprised that they actually selected me as like a finalist before. But I was thinking, um, I guess it's, there's no NDAs and stuff anymore now because, uh, you know, because it didn't go through the final process. Um, one of you guys, like you said before, you guys wanted to see a bear. So um, I actually had like a bear clip of there that day. So um, here, how about I show you this? Welcome to Pico Vancouver. Welcome to the Grizzly Bear Habitat. So you've come at a very uh, opportune moment, actually. Uh, the bears is. are in front of us. We have uh, Kula the bear is right down here in front of you. And uh, Grinder on the hillside is from Invermere. This is in the southern interior, close to the Alberta border. And uh, he was born around January 2001 as well. So they share many things in common, though they're not siblings. Well, that's Grinder up on the hillside. And he came here in uh, September 2001, 15 years ago this very month. Uh, they do have all the skills necessary to survive in the wild, except for one. Uh, they no longer fear humans, so they will have to stay here. But, uh, you know, um, it's not such a bad thing. They have a very good life here. They have no threats. Uh, they're very well cared. They have free medical and dental, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll show the rest like another day because there was actually some other interesting stuff. But again, I didn't have like the quality in terms of the picture and all that. I didn't like, have like this uh, camera, for example. But I was thinking in terms of um, drones uh, as well, one of the things they wanted you to answer in that video was tell us something that you fear about, I guess, like in the future of Canada. And actually, what was in my mind that actual day, actually, I said um, something along the lines of, I hope, uh, for example, um, like drones, for example, that's a hobby I wanted to get into. And one of my fears was because it's a new tech, there's going to be these like crazy, like laws or apprehension on it. I'm like, well, what do you know? It's just kind of interesting how, you know, it just, it just pans out that way. Would have been cool if I actually had a drone for that day too, because again, I think, you know, for stuff like that, that drone basically plays a good role in it. So don't just think it's like a military weapon or anything like that. 
speaking of military drones, I was just reading uh, this in the U.S. where there was apparently like a drone that crashed into the um, a mountain. I think from what I gathered, it was something about um, the flyers. They can, I don't know, for some reason, I communicate with the drone and it crashed. And I was just kind of interested because it said like there was like at least what three people flying like the drone and it still crashed and this is like a really expensive heavy duty drone this isn't like something like I would fly like a Mavic but for fun but it made me think of the topic in terms of like training and all that like for a drone like yeah to a certain extent you want to be educated like to fly it safely and all but I guess examples like this in my opinion I know some people will look at that and say well here's an example even like highly skilled people with like I don't know million dollar drones or whatever can still crash so aren't you guys is gonna crash in more as recreational flyers. To me, like my view of that would be, well, I guess this is the proof here. It doesn't matter how trained you are or how sophisticated the equipment is. I mean, accidents happen. So is that a reason, for example, to just say ban them all? Or would you rather just have, you know, safeguards for like in case something happens? So I think that's more reasonable than just banning the whole tech and stopping it from growing, right? That led me to read uh, about this, about like um, Amazon, how apparently they're proposing or had a trademark of something like a, a drone beehive. Like, wow, interesting. I guess it's supposed to be kind of like a drone delivery center that they envision in terms of um, drones coming in and out and delivering packages. Can you guys envision that? <laughs> like a beehive of drones? That's kind of cool in my opinion, if they can somehow automate that. But these articles kind of relate to um, something else which talked about in the U.S. Some drone manufacturers, they said they were talking to the president of the U.S. trying to encourage them to make more regulations as a way to promote the tech even more. Even I had to think about that twice. What? More regulations to promote it? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Less regulations and less restrictions? But I guess uh, in this case, it's about um, having proper regulations in a way that aren't so generic that makes the process um, so tedious because even with Amazon apparently there was like criticism that the process is so ridiculous that it, um, even they couldn't even practice their um, test flights of delivery in the US because of the slow regulations whereas they had to do it in the UK so that's an example I guess of more regulations I mean, it says here, the FAA has been criticized for its slow pace and lack of flexibility when it comes to drafting drone policy. Amazon blasted the agency in 2015 for not granting a waiver fast enough for the online retailer to test its aircraft in the United States, causing the company ultimately to test its drone systems in the UK instead. So I can relate with that because just like with these SFOCs and all that, like in Canada to me, it makes no sense in many ways. Plus, it's really slow with the way it is to my knowledge. I mean, 20 days to get approval to fly. I mean, you're telling me like flying recreationally here for fun just because of the wait. I need to wait 20 days for permission or something like that to fly here. I can only imagine the approval process would be worse for commercial people too. Imagine having a mission critical, I don't know, flight where you can't really predict the weather, like say, I don't know, like 20 days after. How would you do that? I want to shoot on this day, it has to be like a sunny day, so I need approval on this day, then what happens if it you know, rains that day, I gotta cancel, now I gotta submit like an application for another 20 days? So in that sense, I guess I can kind of understand why they would say more regulations better, because it needs to be more um, thorough. Even for me, like I said, uh, when it comes to drones, I'm still a little iffy about autonomous modes, flying them around like um, people in general, and especially like, like I said, places where I fly, like around tight spaces, like these trees and all that, considering like even things like the Mavic Pro, there's no sensors on the top or the back. But it's always interesting to hear the comparisons like, hey, why can people do this but not the drones? Like, isn't the safety of a drone just as, what the heck is this? This is here. <laughs> I know, she's on the wrong path. <laughs> she should be going to the water. Huh, I wonder if she's injured or not. Well, it looks like the shell is getting too hot in this side. Yeah. Was oh, that the shell that's breaking off? Yeah. I thought that was leaves. <laughs> the shell no. I think she's too hot. Because they, they live in the water. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's okay. Hmm. Wonder if we should turn her around so she goes back. I think she's hungry. Is it? Oh look, she's going back. At least in what the shade. What a shame. cool animal! <laughs> look at the face. It's probably good. Me? 
interesting. Anyways, where was I? Um, something about, um, it's always interesting to hear the comparisons like when people say, hey, why can you do this but not a drone? I mean, isn't a drone safer like in comparison? I mean, it's interesting saying that it says here like, we asked why autonomous cars weighing 3,500 pounds can drive next to hundreds of pedestrians, but a three pound drone can't fly over people. I think those are fair comparisons too. I mean, why can we allow things like, uh, you know, like a car and all that that has accidents like proven deaths on a daily basis yet we allow them to drive those yet for something like a drone for some reason that's like different the only difference i can think of really is one flies and one doesn't although i don't think that should be the only factor that says hey this is like too dangerous i mean it should just come down to like what type of equipment you're using how you're using it in a sense i mean for me flying something like you know the mavic pro or whatever for fun here like in an open area just to capture footage i mean yeah, a car is way more dangerous like in general so would more regulations actually make it better for the drone flyers i guess that's an interesting topic i guess in some ways it would because it makes things more thorough at the same time, I think it depends on how they make it because like for here in Canada anyways, I think one of the things too is how they define commercial activity, which is completely ludicrous in many ways. Like with this documentary, you're telling me all these guys are commercial flyers now and they're going to be fine. <laughs> okay, I'd be interested in seeing if they actually do that. I mean, to me personally, if I want to film in this lake in an open spot for fun, there shouldn't be any issues with that in general, just like how everyone else would use a regular camera. So hopefully they change it. Because otherwise I'd be flying today to show it to everybody as well. <laughs> Anyways, see you guys later.